So after all that, we've built up some unrealistic expectations for our prof first professional here tonight. I'd like to welcome to the stage, Mr. Ben Kronberg. He puts the beard in egg salad sandwich. Thanks. Um... Thanks <laughs> for everyone that came here tonight. Thanks for making the black people that were here feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just had to be somewhere. I'm not sure where. <laughs> they had to be, I didn't ask them. I was curious though, because they were really enjoying and then they left, so it's like they ha it wasn't like, we're not having fun and we're gonna leave. That makes sense. That needs not explaining. When they're having fun, then they leave. Where the fuck are they going? <laughs> I would assume your itineraries, I don't know, that's racist. <laughs> Itineraries. He's fixing the records down there. I'm gonna make a, a cover band called the Marscapone Brothers. We're, we're a cover band for the Almond Brothers. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking, Mars it's not the, the Almond Brothers, it's the Almond Brothers. But Mars Capone just tastes like almond. And almond just sounds like almond. So it really makes too much sense. Um, there's this, I, I, wrote, I wrote a lot of things to, I don't remember. Um, I was on the train. For some reason, trains have this thing, this effect on people. Well, if you're willing to succumb or give in or surrender to the effect of the train, it works. But if you're not, you're going to complain. You're just going to be sleepy and fucking watch your laptop movie, you know? But if you want to have a train experience, you can have a train experience, which includes, but is it limited to a flourish of ideas, interesting conversations, and shitty chicken sandwiches. <laughs> but so I had some ideas on the train, which I was really excited about. It's nice to bring something fresh, even though you guys don't know all my jokes, that I would hope, you know, something about the ego would say, I'm not going to do any of my old jokes because these people already heard them. I know that's not true. <laughs> I know I could pull out the old moves and it would be like new moves but I would know the difference <laughs> I know what I said in the sack last night to wear tonight's sack ride if it's going to be anything it's going to be original if not enjoyable, <laughs> if not satisfying. That's tomorrow night's show. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> that is tomorrow night's show, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I agree. Just so I can move on. You agree just so you can move on. This is one thing that I wrote today, and it's a, it's a problem... And uh, Twitter, is anybody on Twitter here? Woo! So there's some, there's some Twitterers, there's some non-Twitterers, there's some whatever. But Twitter is this thing that's really great, um, and it's, it's helped me with producing ideas, but it's also one of those things now. My jokes have, ten, ha, have had, in the, in the past, been one-liners, which is Twitter, kind of, you know, kind of the whatever, um, short form. But... Uh, so now everything I write almost ends up on Twitter, and then once I put it on Twitter, it kind of like devalues it or something, or sort of dismantles it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if any other comedians or people. Yeah. Whatever. So, 
these are things that I'm like planning. They're like in my chamber to tweet, but I haven't tweeted them yet. <laughs> so you guys go to hear them before Twitter doesn't read them. Because <laughs> I only have thirteen hundred and thirty nine. 38, 39, 38, 39. Why is that person keep? You know, like, why? With a, with a... And there's maybe some sort of glitch, some sort of like bug that, like, wait, I just checked it and I had this and now it's one less and now it's one more. And you keep going back and forth and, and you don't even self reflect on the, the bullshit that's happening with your life. According to iTunes playlist, According to the iTunes playlist of Genesis, we are Eve, Steve Jobs is the snake, and now we are all subject to logging out. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> Would you retweet it? Would I check over and over again on the train if it was retweeted? Yes, I would. I would check so hard, so many times, I would will that tweet to be retweeted just by one person, even if it is that guy that wants on my show. <laughs> even if I can see through his transparent retweet. I know the difference between a sincere retweet. If I don't know you, it's sincere, but if I know you, there's subtext. <laughs> And I hate having to acknowledge the subtext, but it needs to be acknowledged. It's the su subtext is the constant elephant in the room always. Subtext is the elephant <laughs> in the room. Uh, uh, that reminds me of a joke. Uh, I'm gonna make a, I wanna write a play. I'm writing a play. It's hard to know how to start jokes. <laughs> you know? You think once you got Word choice, um, order, word, order, sentence structure. I'm writing a play based on an episode of Sesame Street about a woman's right to choose. I'm calling it Abort and Ernie. <laughs> Abort and Ernie. Or the snuffleupagus in the room that no one wants to talk about. <laughs> That's why it reminded me. <laughs> Or a big burden. <laughs> I submitted that joke um, to the Conan O'Brien show. They're not interested. <laughs> Apparently, they don't like wordplay or puns or abortion jokes or transcending the obvious. <laughs> Just keep it down the middle and hit a strike, right? That's what they want. They always want a fucking strike. <laughs> but what about when you, when you value the gutter balls in life, you know? Whenever you savor those moments that are gutter balls that make everybody else's, it balances out the strikes. If it was all strikes, who gives a fuck, you know? Like, it has to be gutter balls. It has to be food poisoning. We need, <laughs> we need the balance in our lives to, to, to make the good good and the bad bad, we were constantly defining based on the opposites, you know, like, that's why I, uh, life, I, life to me is like butt sex, kind of. I shouldn't, I usually don't pull this out, pun intended. I usually don't, I usually don't pull this out soon, you know, like I, I, I'll try to crescendo sets to where I'll go innocent, clever, and then, and then go into more edgy stuff later because that's how it should be. But then really, you know, you've watched a porno with somebody before and then, and then gave him a butterfly kiss. You've done that. <laughs> you've done that. You've Eskimoed their nose after a bukkake scene. You've done that. You've done that. So... But life to me is kind of the, the analogy. I'm a fan of analogies. Whenever I'm in a relationship, things are going good. Um, that's when puns happen. Puns are when we're getting along, but analogies are when we're arguing. 
<laughs> you know? And I think that's an analogy, I don't know. But <laughs> it's not a pun, I know that. I know that. I know what it's not. It's easier to look on a diner menu that has a thousand items and say what you don't want than what you do want because you might want 10 things, but if you start from the point of like, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, it helps you whittle down what you do want. So likewise with some of these jokes, they will help you define your comedy tastes by giving you what you don't want. If you don't laugh, that's what I meant. But life can be approached similar to, to butt sex because you can, either, you can either focus on the fact that you're doing something so cool, like having butt sex, or you can focus on that little fleck of poop on your dick that takes you out of it completely. <laughs> takes you out of that cool moment. It's just what you want to focus on. Do you want to focus on the feel good? Do you want to focus on the tight? Do you want to focus on the taboo? Or do you want to just focus on the like the, oh, I'm gonna get sick. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a fucking cold after this. I'm gonna get the dick flu. Nobody wants a dick flu, especially girls. Whatever. Whatever. I want to make everybody happy. Usually, um, usually. There's never any times when I don't want to make people happy. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't wish anything bad on anybody ever. Ever, really. No. Do I? Do you? Some people do. You can, if you ask somebody that question, like, who don't you like, and what would, you know, what bad thing would you want to happen to them? They'll start out with saying no, but then they'll eventually... Wait! There is Sarah. <laughs> that was just an example. I don't have a Sarah in my life. Every Sarah in my life is lovely. Which is... Every Denzel Washington movie has a school bus in it. <laughs> Even Glory. <laughs> Even Glory. That's a future tweet. <laughs> To me, running away from a fly makes more sense than running away from a bee. Are you more afraid of disease or a little prick? You know? You know? You guys don't care. I mean, maybe you care, but you don't care. I like, that's one of my favorite sounds. Sound of a beer cracking open. No, and I'm not putting out like, don't do that. I want more people to do that. <laughs> um, but it is a pleasant sound, yeah? yeah. It means fun is happening. And when you hear it, you associate it with beer, you don't think, mmm, Pepsi. Mmm, <laughs> diet 7 up. <laughs> I'm in the mood for a fresca. I'm in the mood for a Kroger seltzer. Because I budget. My budget, my budget doesn't budge. No, actually, I have one here behind the curtain. All right. It's a PBR. Mm-hmm. If anybody wants to smell my body odor and then smell the PBR, you will not notice a difference. <laughs> there is no way to distinguish in a double blind smell test between a freshly cracked PBR and a recently waved underarm where I come from. Where I come from, Richmond, Virginia only has a special place in my heart. There's other places that maybe aren't that great. But Richmond, I've only had cool experiences, and it seems to be continuing. <laughs> this carpeted wonderland. 
I like the juxtaposition of the, the molded ceiling and the carpet. It's like... <laughs> this whole place is an art installation. It's a social commentary on what we've become as a society where we both respect the past and try to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally true. The Pavlovian or whatever experience to me when I look at my iPhone and I see like, oh, I have to check my mail, I have to check my Twitter, check my mail, check my Twitter, check my mail. I have like all these other apps and I just keep going back and forth between these two buttons and waiting for something to hit like a slot machine. It's like my own personal informational slot machine. I'm waiting for the cherries. Always. <laughs> That's what she said. That's what he said. That's what we said. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. You guys have to leave. <laughs> Fucking lame. It's not personal. You guys were having a good time. Where <laughs> Are you guys gonna go hang out with that black couple? Is that what you're doing? You were just here to throw off the fucking <laughs> scent? <laughs> what are you doing? Gallery 5. Gallery 5. What's happening in Gallery 5? Jason's first improv show. Oh! <laughs> have fun. Have fun at the improv show. Um, I hope it doesn't suck, like all of them. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking. That's a joke about improv. I love, I love improv. I will, I will. I told, I'll tell you, it's right around the corner. <laughs> That's the firehouse, right? Yeah. Okay. Have fun. Thank you for splitting the difference. That is nice. Um, have you guys ever been to an improv show? Yeah. What do you think? Not fun. You're here. You're here. <laughs> There's two types of people in this world. Those that like improv, and those that deserve to live. That's a total, like, fascist stand-up. I, a, lot of, a lot of my friends are improv. Like, I think why stand-ups don't like improv people is because a lot of people came from improv, went to stand-up, and uh, they did it really well because they're already performing, they're already comfortable in front of people, and stand-ups have to like start at scratch, so they're a start at scratch. <laughs> Stupid. Um... What I do is I'm an, I'm an opportunist. I'm, I'm more of an opportunist than a comedian because I like comedy. I like making people laugh. But ultimately, when I notice that there's a captive audience, I, um, I know that I can take them hostage. <laughs> and do whatever I want. You know, like, if you were a terrorist, you know, do you take the plane down right away? Or do you have a little fun with them? <laughs> Before I go, let me say a few words. <laughs> said the terrorist. <laughs> said, <laughs> said the terrorist who, always wish, who wishes he was a... I don't know, do, are there any... This sound is to make you nervous. <laughs> it's there to produce anxiety. But within that anxiety, you'll be able to find solace and peace. And eventually, it'll fade away. It's as loud as it was when it first started, but you don't notice it. It's like when you first walk into a rendering plant. The stench of the, the death and the blood is there, but then pretty soon, you know, all you can smell is the receptionist's perfume. 
And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to want to fuck the receptionist. <laughs> and every job you have. If you don't. Are you the receptionist? Is that Great. I like... <laughs> I like doing things that I shouldn't. Right now, this is like going going to the butt without asking permission. That's that's not an analogy. That's like, and I do I talk a lot about butts and stuff and about how why why would you not? You know, something that we've all thought about. It's literally it's a denominator. It it is the denominator. The butt. The poop. The butthole. Pooping. <laughs> Pooping out of buttholes. He wasn't here for the announcement, so don't get mad at him. He didn't know. Lady Gaga put her on hold. He didn't know. Who, who, who was it, really? Lady Gaga. It wasn't Lady Gaga. I hope not. <laughs> She's ugly. <laughs> she has a great voice. She makes a better ringtone than a date, for sure. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Um, I don't know when I got up here. I don't know when to leave. <laughs> I don't know when I've overstayed my welcome. I'm a sociopath. All comedians have a little bit of sociopath in them. I believe. It's a prerequisite. Think about it. Stink about it. <laughs> Roll or rink about it. <laughs> um, I have curses. Every did I do the Denzel one? Yeah. I know. I know that was a joke. I bet everyone has diarrhea the day after a wedding. <laughs> I mean, I always have diarrhea the day after a wedding. That's how I should do that. Because <laughs> you drink a lot, right? It's the reception. I wonder if brides, how many brides have shit themselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's an honest question and one that we all want to savor. Because the idea of a bride should be brought down. We need to chop that tree. It's a little too majestic for its own good. It's a redwood. Let's drive a bug through it. That's what we need to do with that. Rehearsal dinner should just be everybody jerking off onto the ground. I'm sorry. I have creative process happening. <laughs> it knows no bounds. I can say anything in front of my mother, which means this does, this, you know, this. If my mom can take it, which she can. <laughs> See, when you make fun of your mom before somebody else does, it's like a, it's like a shield. I want to write a book called Chicken Fingers. Colon, everything you need to know about girls. Because all they do is order chicken fingers. <laughs> what is it with girls and ordering chicken fingers when you go out to eat? That's all you want? <laughs> Whatever. Whenever I don't want to talk to someone anymore, I just give them a card that says offline and then I walk away. <laughs> Could I say that on Conan? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I don't think they want me. It's okay, I've never... I've ne I'd rather be on Lopez tonight. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> I'd rather be ironically on Lopez tonight than sincerely on... Yeah, for sure. No. <laughs> uh-uh. George Lopez annoys me. Have you guys gandered at that show? Have you ever perused the purple that is Lopez tonight? 
It's fucking purple, but not like fucking Arsenio Hall. Cool. <laughs> fucking. He's no Arsenio. Do you think. Do you think when having sex, magicians use their magic thumb during the money shot and they hide extra cum in there instead of scarves and foam balls? <laughs> Does that work for you? <laughs> they don't get better, they get worse. <laughs> Just like the first part of sex is usually the most exciting. Immediately after the foreplay, the anticipation for the act, that's really exciting then when you get going. But then after you realize, oh, I'm going to have to wait for somebody to come, or I'm going to have to wait for me to come, or whatever. <laughs> then it starts becoming a chore, and you're so, it's like a chore gasm, and you're like fucking waiting <laughs> for something to happen. And it becomes more about like the, what's going on right now? Is this really fun? Is this what we're supposed to be doing? Wait, I'm going soft. And then it's like... <laughs> so it's really how things go in life, even though we have this, these expectations that we project like, oh, it should just keep getting better and better until we just fucking... Oh! <laughs> Which would be great. And maybe sometimes it happens like that, but only if she's French. <laughs> and knows how to act. Because it doesn't really happen. It takes a lot of acting to make love. A lot of imagination. A lot of recall. We've all had to do it. <laughs> You're laughing too hard at that joke. <laughs> and he's not laughing hard enough. <laughs> hard enough. That's what he said. I'm not saying it. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. I don't. I'm still performing tomorrow night, so I don't want to, like. You, you wouldn't. I've really done a good job with, like. <laughs> the infomercial that makes you not want to buy the product. That's what this is. <laughs> this is the infomercial. This is the uncut, the director's cut of Flo the Floby commercial that actually <laughs> removes some guy's dick that <laughs> makes you not wanna. <clears throat> Whatever. A lot of these are just sincere aphorisms. They're not even jokes. <laughs> words, words. Um, you guys are really patient. The Almond Brothers one. That's a, that. I haven't ever done done that on stage. So that felt really, really good. <laughs> Father's Day coming up. Growing up, my dad molested me. <laughs> he was also a barista. Every morning, he would make me a double represso. <laughs> with extra foam. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> it's a future tweet. That I might lose some followers because of, but it's worth it. <laughs> it's like sometimes a lost follower on a good tweet is as good as a retweet. <laughs> you know, it's like, fuck you, you can't take it. Go back to preschool, pussy. Whatever. <laughs> I'm going to start a nonprofit organization called Locks of Love. I know there's already locks of love that exist, but this one's different. This is spelled L-O-X. <laughs> and it's where um, healthy salmon donate their scales to salmon with cancer. <laughs> locks of love. Come on, guys. <laughs> I'm not endorsing cancer. No, God already did that. <laughs> He's already said it's here to stay. <laughs> it is here to stay. Do you think God created cancer just because he likes to watch us race? <laughs> Do you think? It is a marathon. It is a marathon. Cancer is a marathon. It's a great tag. Thank you, guardian angel, who died of cancer. <laughs> How's I supposed to end that? We're all gonna die of something. We all want it to be kind of innocuous death. Sometimes we all like nobody wants to, nobody wants to die, but nobody wants to get out of bed. <laughs> you know, 
How does that work? <laughs> I'm going to open up a Christian pizza joint called Cheese's Crust. <laughs> pizza worth dying for. <laughs> it takes the crust three days to rise. <laughs> We also deliver from evil. <laughs> and forgive us our trespasses, or else we won't be able to deliver to you. <laughs> somebody alerted me. I, I wrote that joke really outside of this. But somebody, like, I was at a Vancouver Comedy Festival, and this girl who was experiencing way more success than me, like, been on commercials, TV shows. Her hot duo was, like getting to perform and getting paid they, we, we have the same college agent but they like make ten thousand dollars a show i make like a thousand dollars a show which is still pretty fucking good <laughs> fucking i can eat like, fucking wherever i fucking want whenever um but <laughs> but she's like uh but it, it kind of made sense why she called me out because she was <laughs> she's like oh i was in this movie called uh good luck chuck and i went on, on a date with dade cook and we ate a at a restaurant called Jesus Crust. So just so you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I didn't say anything, but it was a Dane Cook movie, so of course I didn't see it. <laughs> of course I didn't steal it from the fucking Dane Cook movie, but, but I felt like very insecure because of it. Now every time I think about it, I'm like, did I steal that? <laughs> did I watch that in a hotel room one night and like, you know, through osmosis, like now, think it's my joke, I fucking... <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Even if. I want to open up a breakfast joint that only serves egg white omelets and plays John Lennon songs. It's called Yolk. Oh, oh no! <laughs> These are puns, guys. Those are puns. It's a curse. You all more analogies, you don't like puns. For those of you who don't know what a pun is, the definition of a pun is something that people judge you for it after you say it. <laughs> the Conan O'Brien people don't like that thing either. They don't like the pun thing. It's like, it's all, it's all mindfuck, it's all, uh, it's all bullshit thing, and it's like a thing like, it's, it's not like I watch these shows every night, but yet I want to be on them. It's this weird double standard in entertainment and success is like you want these things that you don't even participate in but because they could help you or blah 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 you know and it sort of so so takes some of the sincerity out of the the actual desire or action which if you're going to have desire for something you should desire it not like not like you know I want you know but when you falsely desire something sometimes you get it but you know how do you fool yourself into really desiring something that you think you need you know like I need to make more money at shows so I can <laughs> pay my student loans so I can that's all I need to pay for but because <laughs> I went bankrupt I don't have any credit cards anymore it was really easy I highly recommend it total weight off the shoulders <laughs> Jewish women won't date me though after I tell them because they're raised right <laughs> I stopped taking New York seriously once I learned that there was a place called Yonkers <laughs> it's right next to Zoinks. <laughs> we used to live in Zonkers, now Yonkers, now live in Zoinks. Okay. <laughs> nope. Butt dials are usually boner dials in disguise. Another tweet. Dot five sound blank super so blah er the v bl. There. Ooh, I want to do a gay porn about a Vietnamese dude in Atlanta called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> no? <laughs> I want to open up a candy store, similar pun. I usually do it with the cheese's crust joke. Um, <laughs> I'm going to open up a candy store called Abraham Lincoln's. And on the outside, it's going to have a sign that says, We've abolished savory. <laughs> I don't know how funny it is 
<laughs> some of giving giving jokes to adults, I want to give them the, the good ones. I don't know what the good ones are anymore. I'm gonna do a song and then you guys. I don't know. Whatever. How would I do this? Put the beer down. I spend so much time alone that I have to talk to myself and thinking to yourself doesn't work always. So sometimes you actually have to talk out loud. Even in front of people. No, funk, do you want funk? Pure punk, detuned funk. Do you want detuned funk? Yeah. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Yeah? What? Hmm? 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 What? Hmm? <laughs> um, you guys are really desirable. <laughs> and I am an android. I am an an- I'm an android. An android. I am an android. An android. I wasn't programmed with... grammar. Okay. Nope. I was it recording? Yeah. Now I am. There's only one measure that I have to deal with. There we go. No, but that's like, that's stupid. That's a stupid beat. Damn it, you know, when you make a stupid fucking beat? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you and you just make a dumb beat? <laughs> have you ever just... Have you ever just... Let's see what this does. Okay. This is a new song. Oops. Is it loud enough? Is it too loud? Is it too loud? No. Is it loud enough? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Like here, it does the feedback. No feedback there, but it's acoustically interesting scenario. You're not getting any feedback here, really. But right there, I've expected more feedback from you guys, like laughs and stuff. More feedback. All right, all right. Bitch, I couldn't call you back because I was in airplane mode. Bitch, I couldn't itch that scratch Cause I was in airplane mode Bitch, you know when I get back You better do what you told It's a new song, that's why you're not laughing yet <laughs> Did daddy diddle or didn't he do that? Daddy diddle, daughter and daughter did not tap Daddy diddle, daughter diddle, daddy right back Diddle daddy in the sack, diddle daughter in the crack Take it back to the MacBook Pro, upload photo, oh no, I go to jail, cause nobody's there to pay my bail. Don't like my disposition, how about my disposition, between your pussy and your butt, it's a split decision. Open up wide, I'll make your insides glisten, your bitches keeps the morning, and my dick is risen. You can see I got a pole, but it ain't proficient, and you know my balls are warmer cause they're on a mission. They're on a mission. Get it dirty, clean it off, wipe it off with the cloth What should I do? Maybe I should ask you what you think, think, think Should I stick it in your pink? Or maybe in your sink and then I'll wash it off in the sink Cause that's gross And when I'm done I like to put on my glasses Watch her spread the asses Trip out of the asses like molasses Cause that's the only word that I could find That rhymes with glasses 
When the beat is soft, it's abbreviated Not hard, like when we made it When I was created, I was born with a boner But it's not mine, it's just a loner Thank God my dick's so big, I call it thick To work, I got a master face and dance I call it the jerk, jerk, jerk Like Steve Martin Not Mark Harmon Summer School, did you guys anybody ever see Summer School? Really cool movie. Who wants to go watch Summer School after this, guys? Do you remember that? This is my dissertation about my dick's location. Between your pussy and your butt, it's a tainted nation. You know the part between where you like to fuck and like to far, far, far. That is my favorite part, part. Where you like to far, far. That is my favorite part, part. Where you like to far, far. That is my favorite part, part. Where you like to far, far. That is my favorite part, part. Where you like to far. Maybe make a baby, maybe have a baby, maybe shake a baby, maybe take a baby, maybe drop a baby, maybe shit a baby, maybe fuck a baby. Like a baby, maybe have a baby, maybe fuck a baby, maybe. Take a baby, baby, listen, boy, baby, listen, baby, so much as the wind. Here is the church, here is the steeple. Open up your pussy, now let's make some people. Let's make some people. Population control, copulation patrol. Leave it in, pull it out, make a baby, watch it grow. Population control, copulation patrol. Leave it in, pull it out, make a baby, watch it grow. Let it go. And watch it go. Let it go. Watch it go. I used to do that one part um, <laughs> about the, um, the 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 here's a church, here's a steeple. I would open up the song like that. And it was like, you know, kind of as a good song, but then, or a good part of the song, but it was like right at the beginning, so like people really liked that part and it got started. But then the other lyrics, they didn't necessarily hold up for some reason, I don't know why, to that lyric. And then, so then I kind of evolved it out of like, or I'll wait for that, that one to bring it in, you know? <laughs> maybe make a baby, maybe have a. Uh, <laughs> it's because when I made that loop, it didn't start on the one, I started the loop on like the three third measure and then so when I try to cut it back in it fucks up um that's neither here nor there <laughs> I mean it's here it's never gonna be there it's never gonna be there um well do you just want to go watch TV <laughs> like how if you have sex and it didn't go great but then you're like Still want to hang out. <laughs> That's why I feel like most of my comedy sets are are like unsatisfied. They're more like nocturnal remissions than emissions. I'm going back to sleep. I'm having a nocturnal remission. <laughs> Write that down. Write that down. Text that to me. <laughs> Text it. <laughs> Um, 303-808-4239. It's a Colorado number. Why, um... Do the... the, the, the I, I would flip flop these. This, this would be my last name. I'm sorry. I, it's not even dark out yet, Jesus. Is it Thursday? Is anybody thirsty? <laughs> I could use a glass of water as an example of a sentence written on the thirst person. <laughs> Rebecca has to go poop is an example of a sentence written in the third person <laughs> um, uh, there's another one first person, third person third person it's not coming to me it's just not coming to me. It's escaping me. Why do you have to escape me, thoughts? The thoughts are supposed to, like, they're all there. Which really sucks for people with Alzheimer's, because they just have a <laughs> shitty time looking for stuff. They just can't access it. It's probably still there, right? They just can't access it or something. There's some disconnect between their motherboard and the keyboard. <laughs> So I can't, I can't name all the guys my girlfriends told me she's had sex with. 
I mean, I can. This is how that joke's supposed to go. I can't name all the girls I've had sex with, but I can, can't name all the guys my girlfriends told me. She said, why is that? Um, no, like, I don't... A dog, a dog can go pee outside. A dog can go poop outside. A dog can even have sex outside. But they can't eat people food. Why is that? You know? It's true. Like, horror movies are more respectable than pornos, right? Like in the movie world? Cinematically speaking, perhaps? Horror movies are cooler than pornos, but but in real life it's opposite. <laughs> Fucking is way more respectable than killing. <laughs> like if you had a kid, you'd much rather have your kid walking on you watching a horror movie than a porno, right? But conversely, you'd probably much rather have your kid walking on you fucking your wife than killing your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? A penis in your mouth is okay. Food in your mouth is okay. A penis in your butt is okay. But food in your butt, that's not okay. Why can't I put food in my butt? Why is that gross? <laughs> Why is that gross? Like, you know how you can watch poop come out of a dog's butt? But you wouldn't watch poop come out of a human's butt if you could help it. But you wouldn't lick a dog's butt, but you would lick a human's butt. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? You can eat in the kitchen. You can have sex in the kitchen. You can have sex in the bathroom. But you wouldn't poop in the kitchen and you wouldn't eat in the bathroom. Why is that? Tell me. You know how butt sex is okay? Everybody in here is cool with butt sex? At least that it exists, you know that it exists. You know how butt sex is cool, but to get a hand job from somebody with poop in their hand, that's gross. Why is that gross? That should be less gross. That should be way less gross. Five seconds, Captain. Full seconds. Three seconds till impact. One second. Simulation complete. I don't know how to end that. Not like that. But I was trying to do the thing where you, you know, it's like beginning of Star Wars and you think he's like, or whatever, he's like doing something. Like he's in a real flight thing, and then you realize it's a flight simulator. <laughs> <laughs> There's ceiling fans in here yet. I don't feel them. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Uh, thanks to all the comedians and Mr. Rugel. And um, enjoy. Are you gonna music it? Uh, yeah, okay, that's, that's it. we're gonna do that, and then I think there's maybe some more beers to drink. Are they, are they gone? <laughs> or we shouldn't drink any of those. <laughs> Please clap again for Mr. Ben Grumper. Fantastic performance. He's performing again. Thank you, Ben. He's performing again tomorrow night at Cafe DM. I believe it's uh, seventy-five dollars tomorrow night, right? <laughs> or free, your choice. Uh, if you're going to min uh, the Gallery 5 thing tonight, if you're sneaking out now, uh, if you whisper a midnight suggestion to the uh, ticket person, you'll get in for $5. Or $75, I don't know. One of those. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out.
Are you recording? No, I'm just...